Thank you, Carla and Charlotte. No problem. <laughs> okay, I guess we're ready to get started. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, we're at our last day, our one o'clock. We're, we're kicking off the third day. Thank you so much for joining us. I see a few names in the participant list that I know are doing work with quality and online course reviews. So I'm really excited to see them and hear what's going on with them and hear from some new people too. My name is Amy Denoyles and I am a senior instructional designer at UCF. I've been here for almost 12 years. And uh, Nancy, please introduce yourself. Hi, I am Nancy Swenson. I'm also one of the instructional designers at the Center for Distributed Learning. And I have been here since 2000. So going on my 23rd year. <laughs> In my 22nd, you're going to my 23rd. Very nice. <laughs> so we're uh, from University of Central Florida, and our role at UCF is pretty diverse. So the main thing is we work with faculty who are teaching online. We work with them one-on-one -on -one in caseloads. Uh, we also develop training for people that are just learning how to teach online. We conduct research. Uh, you know, we're, we're various different hats, but our main goal is to just promote the online quality at, at UCF. And so this certainly, this initiative certainly ties into that. So we're going to be talking about online course reviews. We're going to talk about factors related to participa uh, participating faculty, what's worked well, what are some obstacles we've come across, and then we're gonna share some recommendations for things that have worked for us. But we definitely also wanna hear about you and how online courses are being assessed at your institution, what you've found has worked or hasn't worked. Um, certainly we wanna be able to share some strategies about this. So let me start with a poll question. Hopefully I can do this. Here we go, here we go. And we are just interested to know what your role is, what best describes your role at your institution. You probably wore more than one hat too, but what best describes? Well, I'll give just a few seconds for this. Okay, I'm about to close it. And this is just helpful for us as well. I'm gonna share the results. Nine IDs, seven administrators, one teaching faculty. I hope that teaching faculty will speak up because we're gonna be talking a lot about faculty and what they think about online course reviews and what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. So please feel free to chime in. Speaking of, please use the chat throughout the presentation. Uh, you don't necessarily have to wait till the end or until we uh, stop talking. Feel free to use it as a back channel, or if you have questions that come to mind, please put those in the chat because that that kind of helps uh, you know preserve everything. All right, moving on. Hopefully, a little bit about UCF. You may have already heard some things from previous presentations, but Nancy and I pulled literally the latest stats this morning <laughs> to make sure that we were right. And I'm glad, Nancy, that you reminded me because these numbers are a little lower than they were last semester because of obviously the COVID pandemic. There were even more online uh, learning and credit hours happening. But this is a snapshot of spring 2023. Right now, 62% um, of students are taking at least one online course quarter, a full quarter of our students are exclusively online. We have 68,000 students, so you can imagine. About a third our credit hours are online or blended. And that's the one I was saying last time, it was actually 56%. Now it's down to 34%, which is generally what we've been seeing before the COVID pandemic. And nearly 2,000 faculty have completed training on designing and teaching online, over a thousand of those faculty are still active at UCF currently. That number goes back, if I understand correctly, to when we first started um, having faculty go through professional development to design, develop, and teach online. So that goes back over 20 years. That's right. I, I believe 1998 is the year that I saw. So if you've been doing this quite a while, I was still at UCF as a student in 1998. <laughs> uh, anyway, so speaking of the history, we've had a kind of a front end approach to quality assurance. So we have a comprehensive online training program, 10 weeks long. We're doing it currently, actually. 
um, in which faculty learn how to teach online. They're paired with an instructional designer and they work with them very closely as they're developing a course. And then when they finish that program, they're credentialed to design online courses in the future. And they continue to be paired with that ID as well. If that ID leaves, you know, they are assigned to someone else. But the idea is really to uh, put uh, the relationship with the ID up front and learning all of the general ways of, of teaching courses. So when they go off into the world, they're taking all that knowledge with them and they're continuing to develop courses on their own. That's kind of our model. We're, we don't build the courses for them. They go off and um, like the teach, you know, teach Amanda Fish kind of a thing. So, and it's been working well for us. I, we have had a lot of success. Online learning is definitely a big part of our success at UCF, um, but there's always, you know, room for improvement. Enter the State University System of Florida's strategic plan for online education. I know there are a few people in here that are very, very knowledgeable about this plan. And what we're looking at specifically today was the goal about creating a culture of quality throughout the entire state. And one of the ways to do that is to have a course certification process for all state universities that are offering online education. So basically, we needed to come up with a more formalized way to uh, certify that the courses that are coming out are high in quality. I think we kind of knew that they were, but now we had to um, become a little bit more standardized and, and formal. And those, I think these are things that we did think was a good idea. It's just, you know, this, this kind of pushed us into that. And so here's our quality review process. So first, the faculty opts into a quality review of their course. So they, this is not mandated. Um, an instructional designer typically offers that uh, to do it for them, or they can land on our website and request it that way. A quality review is conducted. So we have developed a set of items and processes that are equivalent to quality matters. We do not use quality matters, but we have a similar process. And um, I'm curious to see if some of you use quality matters. We'll talk about that in a minute. So an instructional designer uses those um, items and then uh, depending on the scoring of those items, whether the items are present or developing, some might be absent, there is a resulting score and, um, and, and basically an 85 or higher is designated as quality, anything less is not. A consultation happens with the instructional designer and the faculty member, no matter what the score is, to talk about the highlights, some of the things that could be improved, and then they come up with an action plan together. So the idea is to be as collaborative as humanly possible and not be so policing of the whole thing. Uh, for instance, an ID might work with someone on their team to uh, improve the accessibility of the course. Maybe the faculty member literally doesn't know how to do certain things. We can take care of that part. But if the faculty member wants to, you know, introduce a new subject or something, that might be something only they can do. So every plan's a little bit different. After that, the course is revised in some way and the, uh, hopefully, the course is designated as quality. Now, once that happens, they do have the option to go further. We have also a high quality review that kind of takes it to the next level. I'm not going to go too far into that, um, but that is, that's also an option. So I'm curious, I think this is about the right time for the next poll question. And it's about how courses are assessed in your institution. So I just launched it. How are online courses assessed for quality at your institution? Formal course review like a, like a quality matters? Is it faculty assess their own courses, peers? baked into the course development process altogether, which that's can't go wrong there. Something else or not sure. And I believe you can answer more than one because there is often an, an element of more than one of these. All right, I see people commenting here. 
Give it just a few more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. Wow, so a lot of people are doing formal course reviews such as Quality Matters, so this is great. I definitely wanna hear more about what's working and what you'd like to improve uh, with the formal course reviews, which is what we're doing. And some also mentioned built into the course development process, and that's absolutely something that, uh, that we're trying to do at UCF. All right, let's move on. Evolution of quality. So we've been doing this for five, six years, almost six years yeah. now. Uh, we have 800 plus designations have been earned by 387 faculty. And it's been literally, you know, one at a time. I'm sure you all can understand that. So we have the majority are the base level quality designation for fully online courses. We also have the high quality online, like I mentioned. We also moved into blended. I, that's actually a good question. And in the chat, maybe you can say, do you also do formal course reviews for blended courses? This was kind of a later addition for us. Once we got fully online off the ground, we moved to blended, mainly because blended is an important strategy at UCF. So we, we did that as well. All right. so. Since we started in 2017, in 2018, a year later, we definitely wanted to ask faculty, how's it going? You know, it was hard for us to know, really. We thought it was going okay, but it was such a new process, different kind of, you know, a thing that the faculty have ever done at the university. So we wanted to ask them what they thought about it. So we distributed a survey in 2018 and 2019. We skipped 2020. Uh, but we also gave one in 2021. So we're we're, we'll be focusing on the 2021 responses, which is funny because now we're about to survey them again and it's 2023 already. I don't know how that happened, but we'll be talking about 2021 today. So we sent survey invitation to 314 faculty. So that's all the faculty that ever um, participated in a course review. And we had a 35% response rate, which is pretty good. The survey questions, we asked them everything we could come up with. And I'm happy to share that survey, by the way, if, if, it, if uh, it might be valuable for you. We asked about their motivation, how well they understood different aspects of the review process, uh, what was the relationship with their instructional designer like, and then, of course, their recommendations for what they thought could make it more valuable. So again, happy to share that. We also did focus groups. Um, as a follow up from the survey. So we kind of randomly selected uh, people that had taken the survey already and we ended up with 14 faculty who said yes, which we were thrilled about. We had to separate that into two different sessions. So we had seven and, and seven moderated by an ID, recorded and transcribed and everything. Uh, we have a task force that works on the quality initiative. So after that, we came together and we kind of reflected, looked at the transcripts and, and uh, you know, came up with some of our ideas. The focus group was really great to better understand some of those survey results. And I'm happy to share those fo focus group questions as well. All right, so I think it's about time. I'm gonna shift it over to Nancy, who's gonna talk about some of the things that we found out. Hi, thank you all again for coming to our session. And as Amy said, we, um, but we did focus groups and surveys for 2018, 19, and 2021, and we're getting ready to, sur to survey them again. The main focus that I'm going to be going over right now is what motivations and impressions came out of the 2021 focus group. And these were their motivations. Their mot the first part was a motivation to engage in the course review. We wanted to know what was their motivation to engage in the course review process, but also what was their overall impression. So first, let's talk about their motivations to engage in the course review process. These are the things that we learned. They wanted to improve the learning experiences of their students. They wanted to have a smoother teaching experience. They found they mentioned that it supported their annual evaluation and or promotion and tenure. We were very pleased to see this because 
to us, the fact that faculty are mentioning they're mentioning these items or including these items in their annual reviews and approach and tenure means it's getting more traction on campus, more respect uh, on campus. And we're glad to, to see and hear that. We're finding more and more departments are coming to us and saying, our department chair wants us to go through this process. So we're, we're hearing that more and more across campus. And we're very happy to see that. The next one, enjoy working with our ID. We were also very pleased to see that because we take a lot of pride at UCF with the relationships that we build with our faculty, and we tend to work with those faculty members over a long, long period of time, many years, and we do tend to build a very strong relationship with them. So we're glad that these quality and high quality review processes have helped um, renew that relationship and make it even stronger and um, hopefully improve those courses. Also, they wanted the digital badge. They enjoyed having that digital badge in their course on display for their students. The digital badge typically, badge typically goes on the course homepage or the course syllabus. The faculty member can decide which of those, those two places the badge will appear and then what part of those, those um, documents and pages they would appear. And their overall impression of the review process. 85% were extremely satisfied with the course review process in general. 90% agreed or strongly agreed that the course review process improved the design of their course. They specifically mentioned items like accessibility, organization, and student performance. So we we're very glad to, to hear that they felt that the review process helped them improve those areas. And 94% agreed or strongly agreed that the ID faculty collaboration and relationship helped to generate strategies to improve course design. Okay, Amy, if you could switch slides. I don't think I can. Okay, I did. I don't think I can. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. now I'm doing it for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, the next part of this presentation that I'm going to focus on is after we did the focus group and after we did the survey, a group of um, instructional designers got together and we looked at both of those, the survey and the focus group now. And these are themes that came out of both of those for 2021. So I'm going to talk about those now. The first theme was understanding certain review concepts. Some felt that, um, well, they mentioned that some review aspects were somewhat understood or not understood. 45% weren't sure when the course designation expired. 37% said they weren't sure how a high quality designation is achieved. And 31% mentioned they weren't clear on which items were used on the quality, and the high quality review. So we realize we have some work to do there that we'll talk about shortly. Also the nature of the review itself, which is design focused rather than teaching, both our quality and high quality review processes focus on design of courses. We do not focus on the actual teaching of the courses, but design, but we've learned through these surveys and focus groups, we need to make that more clear. One of the comments specifically that brought that to our attention was quality can't be done in a checklist. So that was specifically related to teaching. We realized we need to do a better job of communicating the purpose and role of, of these reviews in the design of their course and evaluating in the design. And the other one was, I thought high quality was more about teaching. Again, they thought it was about the teaching. So we need to do better. And we'll talk to you about in a minute about what we are doing about that. Okay, the second theme that we found from the survey and focus group from 2021 is related to refining the ID and faculty relationship. The first thing we, we noticed was that they felt there was a disparity or we found there was a disparity in course revisions. These are three quotes that I want to, that we pulled out that we thought were important to demonstrate this. I did things my ID told me to do to get the badge, even though I really didn't want to. The next one, this is what you need to do instead of tell me what you're trying to achieve. And the third one, I would say, explaining the rationale behind each suggestion is key. And I can tell you, they're absolutely right. We need to do a better job of communicating what we're doing, what we're suggesting to them, the revisions we're suggesting to them, and why. And we need to do a better job, frankly, of listening to the faculty members, especially with that, with that second one, not asking them, what are you trying to achieve with what you're doing with this activity or these assignments or, or this content? We need to do a better job of communicating the, the entire process. And I can tell you that our process is one, and I think Amy went over this earlier, where we do the review and we come up with a list of pros and cons, and we come up with an action plan for the faculty member and suggestions and an action plan. We come back to them with that. 
but it's all about how you communicate that information and making sure it is a collaboration and, and work on that relationship again. So we are doing things to work on um, how we better communicate the course revisions because we look at every um, course review as an opportunity for continuous improvement. That's our overall philosophy. The other thing that they mentioned about refining the ID and faculty relationship is related, related to the status of the review. Faculty mentioning they weren't sure when they would hear about the, the review's next steps, or they didn't know when they would hear about the next steps. Um, someone did include a quote that said, emails from the idea about the schedule was helpful. It helped to have clear expectations from start to finish. We found that that is not the norm, though. We're working on that. And then the other one is suggestions to have an online place to check in on the status, like an IRB or a journal. You know, sometimes when you submit to certain journal, your journal article to certain journals, you can go on and check, okay, well, right now it's at this person's desk or it's at this point in the process. We thought that was a really good suggestion. And we'll talk about some things we're thinking about and trying to do with, with these suggestions. And we realize we need to do a better job of communicating where things are in the process and how long the process takes. All right, our third theme, clarifying student perspective. We found that um, there, the faculty felt there might be some confusion about how students understand the designation. These are some quotes directly from either the focus group or the survey. No students ask about it. And they ask, can they see it when they sign up for the course? And the other one, is there any data on how students understand the quality and high quality badges when they see them on a course? And the next one's related to their suggestion that they wanted to see students more actively involved in the review process. The first one is they suggested we survey the students and find out from them what, what do students want to see and what do they find valuable? How, what, how do they view a, a quality course and incorporate their feedback into the review items? And the um, next one, which we thought was very interesting, is that 48% of survey respondents said they'd be in favor of having students be in a reviewer role of their course. So we thought that was very interesting that they came up with that. Okay, now we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do with this information, these themes that we've learned and the information. Okay, Amy, if you could go to the next slide. Nancy, do you wanna do the, should we do the poll question about, oh, yeah, or should we? Sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> Feel free, That's sorry. okay. Oh, no problem, no problem. <laughs> Jump in any type of polls or any other. Okay, <laughs> all right. Now that we have talked about our three big challenges, we're asking which of these challenges or themes have you experienced? And you can answer one or more than one, or maybe something else that we haven't thought of. We'll give just a minute for that. And then after we talk about how we've applied and what we plan to do, we'd certainly love to hear more about this. Okay, we'll give just a couple more seconds here. People are still answering. Okay, I think we're just about done. Very okay. similar to ours, <laughs> especially those first two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of relieved, right? It's always <laughs> kind of nice to hear when other people are also struggling because as, as many times as we try to explain what a quality review, uh, what an online course review is to a faculty member, for instance, and uh, as many times as we refine our website and emails and everything, there's still a little bit of a gap there. Um, so it's a little bit affirming to see that other people are going through that. Um, but it's also kind of affirms why we are surveying them in the in the first place. If we hadn't, we really wouldn't know what they don't understand. So that's it's been very helpful for us to continue to survey <clears throat> and have discussions with them. And Deb Miller made a very good point in the um, chat. She says the biggest issue our faculty experience using the QM rubric is measurable learning outcomes and aligning those with activities and assessments. Absolutely. The very important is very important, of course, and more often than not, the problem is semantics rather than substance. I'd have to agree. And she says, I wonder if other institutions experience that. I, I would say yes. What do you all think? Anyone want to put anything in the chat about that? Thank you, Deb. Yeah, that was an interesting point where 
the the review items themselves are a point of <laughs> contention. How I see that uh, the alignment versus how a faculty members may see the alignment. We might actually be saying the same thing, but trying to reach that common ground. That's a challenge, definitely. I think we probably have all, all right. our answers. Interesting. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. All right. A little bit, yeah, a little bit, a little bit less on the st the student perspective, but that mm -hmm. kind of emerged organically, really, from our focus group more than anything else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we've talked about the survey. We've talked about the information that we gather for the focus group in the survey. Now we're going to share with you how we're going to apply the feedback that we've received. So first, we're going to talk about what we've done, and then also what we plan to do with the information we've gathered from the 2021 focus group and survey. So what we've done so far is we've added exploration information to our website where we have all the quality information. It's a, it's a um, public website. We've also added exploration information to messages that IDs use and that they send out to their faculty members. And hopefully including that information in that messaging will remind faculty about the exploration process and also remind um, a, the fellow structural designer to structural designers as well. Um, we've embedded all the review items throughout our faculty development. Remember, we talked about that required faculty development here at UCF. If you're going to design, develop, and teach, we've embedded that um, those quality items throughout the entire process. They're as they're building their course, they're they're taking those into consideration and including them. And then we've reminded our IDs our, about our review philosophy that I mentioned before. It's an opportunity for continuous improvement. And then also we're, we're going to be continuing to remind people to, to be careful on how or think twice about how we message things to the faculty, how we go about making those suggestions for improvements and just in continuing to work on that. It's, and then we've created an automatic, automatic notification system in our database that's behind the scenes for us to see that reminds IDs of the status of reviews and progress. Because we, we mentioned that sometimes faculty members don't know where things are in the review process. By having this automated system that only goes to us, only sends messages to the instructional designers about the status, we're hoping that will also trigger the ID to send an email or reach out to the faculty member and remind them or just update them on the status of the review. And the things that we plan to do, with high quality, we want more messaging. We're going to be creating more messaging about how it fits in quality. We mentioned that the faculty are confused about where quality ends and, and where high quality begins or what the differences are between the two and thinking that it's more teaching focused rather than design focused where they're both design focused. So we're going to create some more messaging about that, hopefully make that more clear. We're going to explore and are exploring a simple system where the faculty can see the status of a review so that it's not just they submitted and five weeks later or six weeks later they hear back. Excuse me. And then also, um, we're going to have two items that we're working on related to students. One is that we're going to survey the students to gauge their understanding of the designations. Again, this was recommendations from the faculty as well as find out what design components they think are important. And the next one, again, remember that was also a faculty recommendation, is they are, they, we want to pilot having students review courses and see how that goes. So that, that concludes our formal presentation, but we're, we, we're happy to answer any questions. We'd like to continue this conversation while we're here and learn more about what you're doing at your institution with your quality review. Sorry, I have a cold. I apologize. <laughs> the cough dropped in my mouth. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I, I would love to know um, if anyone would like to chime in about incorporating students in the process. Has anybody gone gone to that realm? Because I, and Nancy knows this, I've wanted to have students become more actively involved in the review process for so long and I do you know, just so many other things pop up that I haven't done it yet so I would love love to hear any stories that anyone has about actively having a student involved if there is one
I don't, I'm not hearing yeah, it. I joined oh, a yes. little bit late. Um, so when you say review process, like, are you talking about, you know, like assessment of your courses and trying to, um, you know, like have an improvement plan and then review that? Okay, yes. Yes, then we do have that at Valencia College. Um, oh, great. Could, could we hear more about how the student fits in? Yeah, um, so I just joined um, an assessment team this semester and um, they're actually in their second year, um, our assessment process. And so um, the student and I jo just joined this semester. Um, I'm the F I'm the faculty developer, instructional designer, and um, she gives feedback on, she's actually taking the classes that we're, we're reviewing. And, um, you know, like we'll ask her, have you ever done um, hands-on labs versus um, virtual labs? And she did both, she offered her perspective. Um, and since we have data from implementing um, an assessment from the previous semester, I'm actually working with a student right now to understand, okay, this is how we look at the data. Um, this is how we're going to disaggregate the data. Um, this is how we present it um, in a PowerPoint with graphs and things to show the larger department. Um, so we're in the process of doing that. Like we showed the data to kind of the rest of the team. And now we're going to, I'm preparing her to show it to um, the department we're, we're assessing. So it is helpful to hear things from the student point of view because she can give us insight on, you know, like how did the hurricanes affect mm. the quality of work that mm. you and your peers were turning in? Wow. Um, you know, that's not something that we can get. Um, so if you're outside of Florida, we had two hurricanes um, last semester and you know, Valencia was out for a whole week and some of our students had no power for a week. And that really sort of affect, might've affected our results. And it's good to hear that perspective from that end, because, you know, as much as we tried to, you know, um, work with our students who had no power, you know, that is gonna really affect the results of how stressed they were mm -hmm. to get That's caught up in those classes. So. Um, hopefully that's kind of what you were hoping for. And totally. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that really, that, that's kind of capturing the human element that yeah. I think can be missing sometimes. Um, yes. Just like the, our, the, the quote, uh, the title of our presentation, quality can't be done in a checklist. Like we, we don't want it to be a checklist. We don't want it to yeah. be impersonal. We want to uh, be as contextual as possible. And what you're suggesting, I think definitely does that. I'd love to, if you don't mind, contact you later and maybe just follow up and I'll yeah an email in the chat so great if anybody wants to contact me that's fine um I think my coworker is on this um meeting too um she can chime in if she wants um but um I'm I'm not all of our teams have student participants um right. it's just something they're trying out at Valencia right now with our assessment mm -hmm. teams okay thank you so much for your feedback yeah, and thank you for letting me talk too. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, another question Nancy and I had, very open-ended, is we've talked about surveying faculty and doing focus groups with faculty. Are there other ways that you have elicited feedback from faculty about the process? Feel free to also open up your mic to discuss things or ask questions. Amy, I'm not quite sure if this aligns or not, but I'll go ahead and say it. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that our instructional designers did, I think on a, that gets at this is when they work with faculty to develop a course, um, you know, there's a set of templates they use and they all have these uh, midterm surveys built into them. 
Mm. And I think they use some of the data, you know, it's got two purposes, one to help faculty under, you know, to encourage them to get feedback before the end of the semester and the instructional assessment. But I think also they have some questions built into that, that ask them things like, um, do, do you feel the course organization or layout makes it easier? Those kinds of things. I don't remember yeah. off the top of my head, but I do think that ties to the whole, um, you know, process of, of doing a course design review. How is that, if you don't mind me asking, how is that, is that kind of standardized, the midterm survey idea? I, I believe that it is standard in every template that they put out, um, but then okay. the faculty member has to deploy it, right? Okay. So, they, so they put it there for them and talk to them about it and encourage them to deploy it. Um, and I don't, I don't honestly remember whether it's uh, still a survey in Canvas or if it goes to Qualtrics or something where they can um, watch the aggregates, but um, be happy to follow up with the folks that work in that to learn that, more. That'd be great. Yes, I'll, I'll send you a note because okay. we've, we have kind of done that, but it's been more informally where, oh, it just happens to make sense right now and do this, you know, but we haven't really had a more formalized approach to it. And I think we could, now that you mention it, like Nancy, we can see who's teaching in the spring and who has a quality reviewed course and, or who's going through the process and try to get that midterm thing, you know, thing together. But I would love to see the actual survey too, just to get some ideas. Sure. Glad uh, to share it. Thank you. So that's actually, that's like a, a, a really interesting way to give feedback to the faculty from their students, but you're kind of moder you're, you're kind of guiding the students to talking about course design. I like it. All right. Does anybody have any specific challenges they're dealing with right now with regards to faculty and online course reviews? Amy, hi, it's Tina. And I know we're done the last hi, Tina. I invite everybody else to ask this question, but something that I've come across a couple of times with my faculty, other faculties, um, is that we will do the QA and it meets the criteria, but as we're looking at it, we know it's not where it should be. It's a very fine line. How do we approach that better with the instructors? Well, I'm seeing a comment from Jason Garvey in the chat about we often have faculty who do not want to make corrections based on the course review. Not 100% what you're saying, Tina, but definitely related, where you and the other person just quite aren't seeing eye to eye. And Jason, I don't mean to call you out, but do you want to expand on that? Or do you have an opinion about how to help with this problem? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's oftentimes what happens is the, the faculty member, you know, because ours, we will work through like the course review process with them and say, this is the rubric that we're going to use, you know, and this is how we're going to assess you at the end. And we all, and we, and we have two other instructional designers come through and do that process along with a QA check. So we have more of a QM and then like a QA, we use a modified QM type of rubric. Um, and then we'll have faculty who'll just say, yeah, just outright refusal. I don't want to do it, you know? And then we're just kind of stuck because it's their mm -hmm. courses. You right. know, it's like, and for, and, and some of it depends on some of the relationships that you've built with the faculty member to know, you know, I can go in and change this and they're not really going to care. And they're, but some are very like, no, don't change anything in the course. Um, and, uh, you know, and others will, you know, and so we just kind of have to write, yeah, like the academic freedom, like we just kind of document and say, faculty didn't want to change this exactly that's, that's right. where we kind of land of like we tried we've had three people you know we've had the you know one of the instructional designers that you're working with throughout the semester say you can't use you know the student will understand how to build a car engine or something like that like something very you know vague yeah and the other two instructional designers are like yeah this doesn't work and then the faculty member can say no i want to keep it as is and so right right that's where we that's, that's where it lands and that's kind of where it's like, 
so we're we're in the process now it's funny we're we're in the process now because there were conversations where between our you know, like our bosses 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 or whatever you know in terms of like they're not doing this they're not you know back and forth and they're like well what's actually happening what so now we're trying to make recommendations of like what happens in in that case because sometimes too the course will be live and we don't want to go in and make changes to their live course right you know, so it's like what do we do at that point so right Right. Yeah, it's funny. We've we've had some of those situations. Thankfully, that's not the norm, but we definitely have had some. And it there's so many different factors. And the relationship with ID does matter, in my opinion, because sometimes I will work with someone who have trust uh, what I'm saying, even if they don't totally agree, they trust it and they go with it. Others not. <laughs> um, but then there's also other ones. Like I remember one where basically her annual evaluations, awards, those kinds of external things did kind of depend on the designations. And that prompted her that it's not the best, uh, best reason to to update certain things, but that prompted. So I think everyone has slightly different reasons, but we have come across some where it is an outright refusal. And I don't feel right forcing, forcing changes, but, but it's a good point about kind of documenting this is what was said person decided not to but yeah that's a tough one well ladies we are down to the last minute of this session this has prompted i think conversations and interactions that are going to go beyond the top kit meeting and Definitely. amy and nancy have left their um, email addresses please contact them contact any of us i think we have some emails in the chat also for those playing the shuffleboard uh, contest. It's quality underscore checklist. Amy also put the checklist in the chat. If anybody needs that link, don't hesitate to reach out to them or to me. I do have a copy of that. They've also have the quality checklist. And as a reminder, this PowerPoint will be up on the website, hopefully tomorrow, but by Monday. So you can go back and be able to um, go back into all of this for any of the links. Right now, we have a break until 2 p.m., I believe. Let me check the schedule there. And any last questions while we have everybody's attention? <laughs> well, I'm going to give you the thunderous applause from all of us here. It was one I learned more, too, and it's just eye-opening to be a part of this and to know that we share this across the state. Yes, and thank, thank you. you. And, Jason, and, we'd be happy to share the survey with you. Yes, Jason, we'll we'll share that out, and we'll put the slides up as soon as possible. And yes, it's just it's 